Hey, how's everyone doing? My name's Robin Kurz, and I have the pleasure of showing you guys and gals around the new M Flare version 2, the latest incarnation of Motion VFX's brilliant Lens Flare plugin. Yes, for those of you already familiar with previous versions of M Flare, version 2 has been made even better. Superb for adding beautifully crafted organic lens flares to your footage for added depth drama, or just as a cool visual effect. Next to things like a fancy new color picker, they've added on-screen controls for all major settings, removed the external app and moved everything inside the host. We've also gotten cool new post effects, such as blur and grain. They've made it much, much faster, but best of all, we get brightness tracking and, as with various other Motion VFX plugins, the Mocha Tracker has been integrated for even more precise and realistic flare animations. But instead of listening to me go on about it, let's take a step towards becoming the next JJ Abrams. Jump in and let me show you all the goodness over these next few tutorials. So I'm going to start out here in Final Cut Pro 10 to show you some of the new features and options, but mFlare works pretty much the exact same in Motion, although Motion gives you a few more additional options, which I'll be covering in the last episode. Installing mFlare or any product that you buy at motionvfx.com couldn't be easier either. If you haven't already, you simply download and install the free mInstaller app from their site, and after you purchase anything online, it shows up in here, in the mInstaller menu, ready for installation with a single click. It doesn't get easier than that. So I've gathered together a few clips that I'd like to give a little more depth and flair, pun intended, with the help of a flare. For starters, I have this descending drone shot of a cityscape with a nice sunset showing up behind this building. It's nice, but could also use a little more depth to really make the sun pop. So let's see what we can do. To access mFlare and all its presets, I just need to open up my effects browser on the right and look for mFlare 2 under my video effects. Once selected, I'm presented with over 100 flares in five different themes, ranging from anamorphic flares to cinematic, off-screen, and lastly, a bunch of cool sci-fi flares. As with any other effect in Final Cut Pro, I can simply skim over each flare with my mouse to get a real-time preview of it in the context of my active clip. This obviously is a huge help since I don't have to constantly apply, check, and if I don't like them, delete a bunch of flare effects to see if they're what it is I'm looking for specifically in the context of my footage before actually applying them. So I have this, what I believe to be an evening sun, so I can check if mFlare maybe has some sun-specific flares for me to choose from. For that, I can simply enter sun into the search field below my effects browser, and voila, I get a wide array of sun-specific flares. I actually like all of them for one reason or another, but I think I'll settle for this classic evening sunshine, which has a nice red glow to it. To apply the flare, or any effect for that matter, I simply need to have the clip selected and can double click on it to apply it or simply drag and drop it on the clip. After doing so, a couple of things happen. First off, we of course see our flare in our image at its default position but also two circles, which are our on-screen controls for both the source or light point and the center point of the flare. Next to those, we've also gotten a panel of three buttons at the bottom left of the viewer, which we'll get into later. With my mouse, I can click and move the center point control in the middle of the frame to move it, which changes the angle of the flare's elements relative to its light or source point. And that's pretty much it. But if I move my mouse over the source point control at the top, it activates even more controls. With the inside circle, I can, of course, move the light's position as well. And with this, we can also see that version 2 is much faster, even with much more complex flares, thanks to a complete rewrite that utilizes your hardware even more efficiently. There's essentially zero perceivable lag, as opposed to version 1, which was considerably slower with its redraw. But in addition, we also see an even larger circle around the flare, as well as a slider below the light position. These are the brilliant new on-screen controls in version 2. Owners of the previous versions of mFlare will know that next to simply changing these two position values, there was really nothing else you could do without opening the inspector. 
Well, now we're in fact even able to grab the outer ring and scale it up or down, which in turn scales the flare as well. On top of that, I can click and pull the slider that has appeared to adjust the flare's brightness up or down. So now we're actually able to manipulate some of the most important main parameters, such as position, size, and brightness, without even having to open the inspector. Pretty cool. So let's take a look at what else I do get in the inspector. I'll close the effects browser with Command-5 and hit Command-4 to open the inspector. And with that, we can immediately see why being able to expand the inspector to the full height of the window with a simple double-click on the top bar was a great addition on Apple's part. Namely, to make working with such complex plugins that much easier. So at the very top, we have the gorgeous new color picker color palette. From what I'm told, it works similar to the online color scheme generators, but the main difference is that it doesn't generate colors based on standard sRGB values, but rather on actual wavelengths of light, which helps mFlare achieve an even more realistic result. Which also explains this little black spot in our circle, since that would be the infrared area of light, which, as we probably all know, we can't actually see. Above it, I have three different modes to choose from. A single, three, or five color scheme. Whichever I choose, I get at least one large circle, which is my main color and should generally be used on objects that contribute the most to the final image, such as glows, glints, and shimmers. In the case of the three color mode, I get the same primary, but also two circles for secondary colors. And with the five color palette, we also get two similar ones for tertiary colors. Secondary colors are based on the main color, but offset by an angle around the center of the palette. So moving the large primary circle moves all the other colors in tandem, but moving any one of the secondary or tertiary doesn't affect the position of the primary. This obviously allows for very precise and interesting color schemes. The saturation of each is of course determined by the distance from the middle, where again, all others follow the main, but not the other way around. Whichever colors I've chosen are then conveniently shown below the picker as skimmable vertical swatches, but also later in our editing panel, as we'll see. For this flare, I'm going to go with a three color scheme and set the main to something a little more yellowish and cool down the secondaries to match the surrounding sky a bit better. But before we get into the real nitty gritty of all the amazing customization and animation options we have, let's just do a quick and simple animation on this image with our flare so we can later appreciate the other options for doing the same that much more. For that, I'll just turn off my flare for a moment and move to the beginning of my timeline and play the clip. As we can see, the sun doesn't really start showing up until roughly a second and a half into the clip. So for our animation, we wanna find the spot where it starts coming in and the moment that it's at full brightness, as well as make sure, of course, that the flare follows the sun. So I'll just quickly skim through the clip and set a marker with the M key as soon as it starts peeking out from behind the building, and then another marker when it's at its maximum brightness. Okay, now with the playhead at the second marker, I'll turn my flare back on and head over to the inspector to my M flare settings and flip open the basic parameters. Here I have said basic parameters for brightness and size, the two things I can already do via the on-screen controls, with the addition of individual scale parameters for X and Y, should I actually need them. Here, I'll simply add a keyframe for the brightness parameter. Now I'll just make sure my flare is in the right position. Go back to my parameters and show the position settings. Under source, I'll leave it on manual and set a keyframe for the other four parameters under points for good measure. Now all I have to do is jump back to my first marker and reduce the brightness either with the on-screen control or in the inspector, and also reposition it slightly as needed. Now I'll just go to the end of my clip and go back one frame and readjust the position to match the sun. And if I like, I could also just change the center point position a little to add a little more to the animation. And there you go, a quick upgrade for my shot. But next, we'll take a look at what options I have for editing my actual flare, and later, which amazing new features could have sped this whole procedure up a lot. So stick around. <laughs> 